JavaScript console is a great place for testing your JavaScript codes and finding errors in your JavaScript within your applications. But all the changes we made in the JavaScript console will disappear as soon as you refresh the page. That's why when we develop web applications, it's a common practice to put our JavaScript code into a JavaScript file that's separate from our HTML file, like we do with the CSS for example. So now we'll learn where and how to link that separate JavaScript file to HTML file. In the previous lecture, I have mentioned that you can use JavaScript in many different places, such as on browsers, web servers, and desktop applications. For now, we'll focus on learning about how JavaScript works in a browser. The browser is the most common place we'll encounter JavaScript and easiest place to try out JavaScript programming. Browsers have many different functionalities, but in simple words, Browsers mainly do the following three things. First, browsers display web page contents which are structured using different HTML tags. Second, browsers apply styles to web page content using different CSS rules. Third, browsers add behavior and interactivity to a page by following the statements in a JavaScript program. Every browser has what's called a JavaScript engine built into it. It's a powerful part of the browser that reads and evaluates the statements in a JavaScript program. When a browser evaluates a JavaScript program, the JavaScript engine evaluates its statement in the program and does what the statement says to do until it finishes all the statements. Just like what we saw in the previous lecture, when the browser reads a statement with an alert command, a dialog box appeared on the screen. And there's one new vocabulary for you. When a browser reads a JavaScript program, we call that running the program or executing the program. So now you'll definitely have clear understanding when developers say things like, when the browser executes this line of code, a dialog box appears on the page. Browsers let you run JavaScript code from several different places. Most of the time you'll write all your JavaScript code in a file that's separate from your HTML files. And there are two steps in writing and executing JavaScript from a file. First, you create a JavaScript file with a .js extension. Then you link or add that JavaScript file to an HTML file. Let's try to create a new JavaScript file. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called Add JavaScript to HTML Page. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. Now in the exercise folder, I add a new file using this new file icon. I name it demo followed by the .js extension. Demo is the name I want to give this file. A JavaScript file doesn't have to be named Demo. You can name the file anything you want, but it has to be with a .js extension. I also add a line of code to this new JavaScript file. I'll just use the alert command with a message from demo.js. Now the question is, how do we link this JavaScript file to our HTML file? To link this JavaScript file to our HTML file, we can use the HTML script tag. The HTML script tag has SRC attribute, which stands for source just like the HTML image tag. The value of SRC attributes instructs the browser where to find and load that JavaScript file. Now in the index.html file, I'll add a set of opening and closing script tags inside the head of document. The demo.js file is in the same folder with index.html file, so we can point to it by setting the src attribute value to demo.js. The demo.js file is now linked to the index.html file in the current exercise folder. That means the index.html file can now run JavaScript codes which are written inside this demo.js file. I'll flip back to the browser. Refresh the page. As you can see, the browser displays the alert dialog. 
We can also add JavaScript codes directly inside the HTML by placing our JavaScript codes between the opening and the closing script tags like this. I'll add another set of opening and closing script tags inside the body tag and then write another alert statement with a message from HTML codes. I'll save again. And notice how the alert in the linked file demo.js runs first and then the alert from the HTML codes. That's because the linked JavaScript file demo.js is placed in the HTML before the set of script tags. We can also place this code in the head of the document. For example, I'll cut the script tags out of the body and paste them below the first set of script tags. I'll save again. And notice how the browser runs each in the same order as before. Now one thing you can do is link to a JavaScript file using the src attribute and insert JavaScript code inside the same script tags like this. Once you set a source, anything between the script tags gets ignored by the browser. So make sure that you have only one set of script tag per linked file and another set of script tags for any JavaScript you add directly inside your HTML codes. And it's perfectly common and okay to have more than one set of script tags in an HTML file like this. This is necessary if you want to link more than one JavaScript file to a page. I'll go ahead and delete the second script tag because I did not have that file, so I don't need it. And last but not least, you can place the script tag almost anywhere in an HTML file. And they all work fine most of the time. But it's a best practice to place the script tags within the body just before the closing body tag. This will help the browser load and display the HTML with its CSS before running the JavaScript. So place your script tags inside the head of your HTML document only if you have to. Let's see what happens if I move the script tags to the bottom of the page just before the closing body tag. I'll save again. Refresh the page. And notice, now the content of the page have already displayed. Then the alert dialog from demo.js file appears. I'll click OK. Then the alert dialog from the HTML codes appears. OK, so from now on throughout this course, We'll follow the best practice and place our script tags just before the closing body tag.